they wanted money and they weren't as like friendly. You take one look at my thick frame glasses, dad hat, and plaid shirt combo, and it's clear as Crystal Pepsi that Title Fight is my favorite band. There hasn't been a band like them since, but if you ask some other music nerd, he'll tell you that there's been millions of bands like them in the past. To that, I say, nah-uh. Title Fight is a one-of-a-kind punk band that blends all the best aspects of all the best punk subgenres. They can be correctly described as a hardcore band, a pop punk band, a post hardcore band, an emo band, a post grunge band, or even a shoegaze band. Their execution of these flavors are specific to them, which is why they mean so much to so many people. During their time as mainstay headliners in the hardcore scene through the early 2010s, they made hordes of people mosh slam dance, stage dive, and sing along to the greatest extent that any band can expect or imagine. Their lyrics explored common themes found in these subgenres, but were more layered and nuanced in their approach. They ran the risk of being seen as too artsy for the hardcore scene, but overcame it through their ferocity, tenacity, and unbridled passion. Title Fight are artists in the purest sense of the word. As good as they are at playing instruments, as proficient as they were at writing and crafting songs, as much as they held the hearts and minds of an entire generation of hardcore showgoers in the palm of their hands, even a band as strong as that with possibly the greatest name for any punk band ever, even they couldn't survive the inevitable. So today, we take a look at their catalog to pinpoint where it all went wrong. Today, we'll discover the day that Title Fight died. Hey, my name's Dan Frampton, and today we're going to talk about Title Fight. But before we move on, how's about you like, comment, and subscribe? If you don't know what to comment, just leave a couple pancake stacks down there in the comments. Even that does a whole lot for the video. Thank you so much. We're rounding the bases to 9,000 subscribers, and at 10,000, I plan on doing a 24-hour live stream, so subscribe today to make that happen. You know, only 35% of you are actually subscribed here. And if you have a couple shillings making some noise in the bottom of your pocket, you can toss them my way by a super thanks or by joining the channel. If you join the channel, you get access to exclusive content. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get to the video. So Title Fight was started by a bunch of 12 year olds, okay? By brothers Ned and Ben Russin and their friend Jamie Roden. Ned and Jamie would kind of be like the two-headed serpent at the head of this band. The demo that they released in 2003 as 13-year-olds sounds like a record recorded by 13-year-olds. Their voices haven't cracked yet, but because they're children, it's actually kind of impressive that they put all this together. Like, the band was called Title Fight, this demo was called Down for the Count, they had a whole identity right away, and it was clear that these guys were very much inspired by Blink-182. This demo sounds almost exactly Exactly like the Blink-182 demo that came out over a decade before this, called Fly Swatter. Songs like Negative Nancy, Major Gain, Down for the Count, all showed that these guys had potential if they just put in the work. And two years later, when they put out another demo, it was clear that they were putting in the work. These guys were now much better musicians. Still clearly children, but the bass and drum and guitar parts are actually more technical than they were in their previous demo. But still, it's hard to believe when you listen to these early demos that Title Fight would become the band that Title Fight would become only a couple years later. And during those couple years, from 2005 to 2009, they put out a split record with this band called The Erections that ended up getting the attention of record label Run For Cover. So that record label put out a little EP called The Last Thing You Forget. It's a little three song EP, but then they put out a whole CD which has all the compilations and the split record that they were working on in the last four years. So even though The Last Thing You Forget is actually classified as an EP, to me, this is the starting point of Title Fight. This is where they begin to get their strong foothold their actual stranglehold on the hardcore scene. They weren't so much a pop punk band anymore. They were more focused on like the melodic hardcore side of things, but their pop punk roots could still be found in the very nucleus of this band. The songs on this EP are very strong and can be held up with any batch of songs in the history of the genre. I know most people don't consider it their first record, but I do. 
But they would release their actual full-length record in 2011. It was a record called Shed, and it came out on Side One Dummy Records. We got all sorts of post-hardcore, emo, pop-punk, and melodic hardcore laced throughout this entire record, and to me, this thing is a perfect record. I love this batch of songs with every ounce of my being. And when I'm listening to this record, I'm like, there can't be a record better than this. This is the best batch of songs ever created. And then, in 2012, Floral Green happens, and I'm proven wrong yet again, because Floral Green is even better than Shed. I don't know how they outdid themselves. When they do something so good like Shed, no band should be able to come back from that. No band should be able to do something better than that. But they do. They're not afraid to try other things. They're not afraid to experiment with different sounds, okay? This record has head in the ceiling fan on it, which shows the band slowing things down, saying that they could take their time. They know their way around atmospheres and moods, okay? But not only that, this record has my favorite song of all time, Secret Society. I made promises that I can't keep. I fell asleep. It's so simple, but it hits you right in the soul every single time. It's easy to stage dive to, it's easy to slam dance to, and it's super easy to sing along to. This is one of those hardcore anthems that'll go down in the annals of time, in my opinion. And over the next three years, Title Fight have that stranglehold on the scene. They are the band that everybody wants to see. They are the band that people are risking life, limb, and liberty for just in the name of seeing them live when they come to their town. But then on February 3rd, 2015, they release what would become their last record, and it's called Hyperview. They said, hey, pop punk, hey, punk rock, hey, hardcore, hey, post hardcore, let's just get rid of you for a bit, okay? Let's just do a whole slow ass album called Hyperview. Now, this thing is way more shoegazy than anything that they've ever done. They took Head in the Ceiling Fan and just made an entire record like that. And in my opinion, this is the day that Title Fight as I know it died. Now, Hyperview is not a bad record, okay? It's actually a pretty good record. But for me, I'm just not ever in the mood for what it offers. It offers a lot of reverb. It offers a lot of delay. It offers a lot of muddy mixes where the vocals are just absolutely buried, okay? So a lot of that stuff I am just not interested in. I'm just like, next song, next song. I want some energy. Do something fun. But just because it's not for me doesn't mean that it's a bad record. It's actually a pretty good record with a lot of great ideas on it. The sequencing of the songs is actually the best part of it. Everything flows so smoothly. It's just a lot of these production choices. I'm like, what are you doing here? This is so hard on the old ears. But I do want to commend them for having an idea and executing it. Not being afraid of exploring themes that they wanted to explore, even though it didn't really go over as well with audiences as they hoped it would. But when you look at the numbers on Spotify, you're like, this is their most listened to record. What went wrong? And to me, it's simple. Yes, they do that shoegazy thing really well when it's mixed in with that energy that the hardcore scene just needs to have, okay? But when you take out all that energy, all that ferocity that I was talking about earlier, and then just layer a bunch of reverb and delay all over the place, it's gonna make people a little bit disinterested, especially when you're in the hardcore punk scene. But Title Fight haven't officially disbanded. They just went on this quiet hiatus around 2018, and all the members of the band and are off doing their own little things. Ned, the bass player, who I consider to be like the front man, I guess, of Title Fight, is off doing his own solo thing called Glitterer, and as long as he wants to do that, man, you just go out and do whatever you want to do, that's so cool, but the day that you guys all want to come back and be Title Fight, just know the world is ready to lose their minds for you, because now we live in a post-turnstile, post-drain world, where a band like Title Fight will actually be in a scene that have other bands that are creating that scene kind of buzz. So Ned, if you're seeing this for whatever reason, what are you waiting for? Let's get the band back together. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you're cool as hell. And if you like this video, you might like these other videos that I put up on the screen right now. Okay, see you later.